Greetings, today I've got a Virgin V Plus Box HD to take apart and see what's inside and see if it's pretty and what sort of interesting things I will be able to find inside. I've had a UV box, uh, I've had a Sky box, um, but I've not had a Virgin Media box to take apart and there it is, it's a different one. Let's see how they compare with the other ones. Now it's a plus model so it will have some sort of hard drive but it's not the latest one uh, so I presume it's not going to be a serial ATA more likely will be uh, the uh, parallel ATA cable hard drive. There are three security torque screws holding the most part of the case so let's remove that. And there we go, the screws are removed and the top should pop off easily, like so. And straight away we are inside and first thing to notice, there is a ton of dust in here. So it's an old box, really old box. As you can see it's an absolute mess inside. There is some strange gunk on a lot of the chips and it's not even the soft type. It seems like they're trying to hide something. So. We'll have a look if we can get um, underneath to it. This is the the box that we're talking about. It's made by Scientific Atlanta, uh, made in Hungary, CATV converter, Explorer 8300 DVB digital home communications terminal. So 8300 DVB model, revision 1.7. Okay, I removed everything that resembled a screw, at least on the outside, there was probably still some holding the board and let's see if we can start removing stuff. Okay, um, interesting, here is on the side is a big fat thick aluminium plate which was acting as a heat sink uh, for the hard drive. Uh, it was basically touching onto the hard drive like so and there is a heatsink compound onto it. Uh, here on the side it was just cooling the hard drive and there's absolutely a ton of dust. And let's see what is the hard drive. So Western Digital Caviar 160 gigabytes. Here we've got the smart card reader which is nicely terminated with a with a header which is really nice. There are a few tabs in few places. Really nice connectors on this. Um, all of those have got both hard drive and uh, the front panel has got those connectors that clip in like so. Okay, I think we've removed everything that was uh, a screw on the inside. So now I think this panel should come out. No, there is still something holding it. And as usual I forgot about the antenna cable connector to unscrew it on so let's give it one more try and there we go the panel comes off and now the board should come out excellent and we can disconnect here's the power connector nice big fat connector and here is the main board of course terribly dusty we have the power supply which also should come out at this point I think I'm wondering what's holding it in place okay those uh, tabs were bent over so let's fix that and there is the power supply remember always to discharge the cap okay nothing in this one and the front panel so I've removed the screws so now we've got only a few little tabs that need to bend them over plastic tabs and that will release everything and there it is oh that's a pretty front panel I think I would have preferred it without that uh, thing in the front that looks really nice uh, that is probably the prettiest front panel I've seen in a long time so we've got the infrared receiver nice VFD display lots of uh, tactile switches a few LEDs um, those must be infrared remote DS, no those are just normal LEDs um, and yeah that is that is really pretty panel uh, with a scientific Atlanta logo on it and a space for barcode that was not fitted A0825 that looks like a date code uh, 25th week 2008 maybe right let's have a closer look at all the parts so here is the front panel up close 
and isn't that pretty this is a this is made in a way that you know what you could use this without uh, actually the plastic in front of it it has all the markings on the and yeah nice brown color with cream sort of silk screen on the so really nice front panel this is by far the best looking panel I've seen in any box so far and on the back it's a little bit old so there is some residue maybe this has been spilled there was something was spilled onto it and not much uh, happening on there it's just a bunch of resistors a couple of little Mark Q1, so probably transistors over here, something to do with the uh, vacuum fluorescent display. Um, and not much else, just passives. Here is the smart card reader, uh, and really nice this one because it's not been soldered onto the board. It's got a wired ribbon cable, and you can see I can use a old prepaid debit card over here to insert it and you can see the gold contacts making contact with the chip so yeah this is this is handy uh, I could reuse that for something you can see there's also another pin over here which detects whether the card has been fully inserted as soon as I press the card all the way in it uh, breaks that connection over here here is the power supply from the inside and it's all lead free soldering made by scientific Atlanta themselves we've got a, again uh, a code 0820 so 2008 presumably that is um, we've got a fuse 3.15 amp big uh, Elna cap 450 volts 85 82 microfarad um, common mode choke a few diodes resistor big transformer and interestingly they've got those caps over here that they've uh, yeah poured this resin over them which has become really crumbled over time but strangely uh, they've poured the resin over the venting holes so in if this went bang the caps will well they would wouldn't be able to vent through this because i'm sure this was quite sticky when new it's it's become brittle with time but those cups would have gone with quite a bang actually I would think that this is the last one normally you'd put um, some sort of um, celastic at the board where the cups are holding the board to stop them wobbling but okay that's what they've done back of the board you can clearly see um, this one's the low voltage side then we've got the isolation path uh, through here and here is the here is a capacitor across mains and uh, across the high and low voltage side weird voltages output over here here is the layout of the output we've got ground plus 5 plus 5 not connected minus 8.5 then 3 grounds 6.8 volts and 12 volts then standard 12 ground ground and 5 volts so yeah those are the 6.8 and minus 8.5 really unusual and here is the main PCB, the most interesting bit, presumably. Uh, let's first uh, remove the can from the high frequency unit. So this is where the signal from the cable to V comes in, high frequency, and gets demodulated and turned into some sort of digital signal. So it's uh, technically it's analog when it comes in, and then out of this can comes out what comes out is digital fantastic things inside so let's have a closer look okay let's have a look where the signal goes through from the cable TV connector over here and what sort of strange high frequency stuff is happening to it so first of all we've got it here it goes through some sort of inductor or, or a choke presumably to ground I'm not sure it disappears in one of the inner layers but then it goes through a cap seems like another inductor because it's marked L201 and it goes onto this module and this is the first unusual thing you don't see that very often it's called Macom uh, that's the brand and you can see I think that might be the number MAFLCT0083 and what it seems it's some sort of a module where there is a number of 
different inductors in different places and a few cups soldered on and also one small inductor on a ferrite form, a ferrite core and that's the first time I see something like this it turns out to be for this to be MACOM, it's not MACOM, it's M slash ACOM part and what it is is a cable TV duplex filter 8 to 65 and 94 to 860 megahertz so it's a very unusual part one I have not seen before um, as you can see this is the exact picture of the part that we have in the box and yes uh, here is uh, what it is so it's a high pass filter and then the low pass filter over here and all most of the parts are grounds all the way around it and I saw somewhere here at the bottom that it has a patent pending technology here is the performance of the um, low pass filter and the high pass filter then next to it we've got a chip which I'm trying to angle so we can get some sort of picture and this little thing uh, is from Microtune I have not seen this brand either before, it's got a nice little logo that looks like explosion out of a rectangle uh, but what it is, it's, a, it's basically a tuner um, in silicon uh, Micro Tuner MT2060 is an advanced low power single chip broadband tuner that has been optimized for high performance cable modems and here we've got a little transformer or a choke which looks like there is there are two separate windings on the or maybe even three so yeah tiny jewel teeth out of that but then moving on let's move over this side here we have another inductor on on another board that's been soldered on so it's not soldered onto the main board it's soldered onto a little PC, PCB and that PCB has got little legs and that's soldered on and it also has a little plastic disc on the, on the top and when I saw that I thought what on earth is that and why has it got it but what I think it is um, this is manufactured this way in order for the pick and place machine easily have a flat surface to um, you know to vacuum suck onto it and place it on the board and here is more inductors let me tilt the board so you can see what those are Yeah, there is a, a little inductor underneath. Well, it's got this plastic, rather stiff plastic uh, cup or disc. And same over here. It's also got uh, one of those. And those are all on separate boards. So those uh, must be manufactured as modules. And then pick and place machine goes tick tick place them places them in different places here we have another chip which this here is it's from epcos x6966m and it's a relatively large module i can see from underneath it has five pins um, on the bottom of it. it's a through hole component and what that is I am not too sure but I am interested and it's a intermediate frequency filter for digital cable TV and here is the package of what it looks like and basically inside we've got two capacitors and two resistors in a can um, and yeah that's what it is those are most definitely not uh, a discrete components inside they're probably just on some sort of a substrate uh, created very precisely uh, but that's what it is um, a big big can relatively large can but there is just four passives inside further on we've got a can with it a can so some really serious stuff must be happening here so it's a it's a large can and then there is a small can right inside of here and we've got some strange arrangements of components over here again those are laid out in a certain way here is some circular path and whatnot all of this is laid out in a very specific way in order to make sure look at this 
this is not how you lay out your normal regular boards it's uh, yeah this is just weird the next section we've got two very similar looking sections so we've got again those SX6966M chips and a few very again a few very weird arrangements of components those are some sort of the modulators the final stages which allow you to and here the same thing again which allow you to watch one thing and record another so effectively there are four similar sections with um, the same chip and the X6966M and when we go out of the can here we have uh, some devices which are marked U so I don't think those are transistors but I think those are linear voltage regs and there's one two there we go um, LD1086-33 um, LD1086 uh, low dropout fixed uh, positive voltage regulator and yes uh, dropout 1.3 volts at one and a half amps that's quite low but not the lowest you can get this can be easily reused for something here is another chip which again due to the heatsink might be a voltage reg and the little guy here is the LF00 series from uh, ST Microelectronics um, very low dropout voltage regulator 0.45 volts dropout so that's much better than the previous one and another one here L49402 and another low voltage dropout regulator one and a half amps L4940 series depending on which variant you have you can do 5, 8 and a half, 10 and 12 volt outputs presumably that's a 5 volt one that we have on our board because it ends with M5 and here we have um, right next to the front panel connector we've got some interesting devices for some reason they needed four of them 74HC595 that sounds familiar and those are 8-bit shift registers and we've got AD9878 BSTZ number 80832 MXFE which is doing most likely something used it's a mixed signal front end for broadband application and here is the main chip which is scientific Atlanta so it's a custom part made by ST Microelectronics the scientific Atlanta has ordered enough of them that they've put a custom part number on it okay and disappointingly this is probably the ugliest thing about this box and this teardown today that a lot of the chips are blobbed with this sort of thing and this is this is quite stiff actually and there is lots of it there's one two three four and five blobs of this uh, trying to cover up all sorts of proprietary amazing and top secret technology that they've had in this virgin box right okay let's try to be brutal first No, that doesn't work. It's hard as a rock. They've done it proper. And here is, I remember from one of the previous teardowns, is the H1102NL thing, which um, has got a bunch of little transfer, four little transformers inside. What else have we got here? Silicon image. Oh, that's, uh, as far as I know, that's a hard drive controller. And I got this one backwards with the Marvel chip in a moment. So um, chip works. Uh, so silicon image, T silicon image TMDS panel link. So this is a HDMI panel link transmitter with DVD audio. And I wasn't able to find a full data sheet. This is just some uh, marketing brochure. Interestingly, here is a Sony branded part, and we have NXP. TDA 8024T, which is uh, from what I remember the driver for the smart card interface. It's a standard smart card interface, so it's basically a chip that will uh, work with either 3 or 5 volts uh, chips on the card, smart cards, whether a debit card or uh, SIM card or anything else. Uh, made by NXP and it's a standard thing. It's uh, pretty much every set of box has got the same solution. Here we have an interesting chip and that's right next to the HDMI output 
and most definitely it's a HDMI output driver chip 88SA8040 TBC1 uh, which um, turns out I was able to find something on the wiki and uh, yeah this uh, turns out to be also in a PlayStation 3 and it's uh, this is the serial ATA controller on the board uh, that's what uh, was controlling the eSATA on the back of the board there is a TI part over here PS5130 which probably does some sort of voltage regulation and this is a TPS 5130Q1 which is triple synchronous back controller with NMOS LDO controller there we go coilcraft capacitors beautiful look at the logo on the it looks like hundred and the most beautiful panel that I've seen in a long time and one of the ugliest boards that I've seen in a long time as well because of all the gunk uh, all over it so yes I think that's going to be it for this one not much more we can do so thank you very much for watching subscribe for more random stuff give me a like on this video I'll appreciate that that uh, helps a lot and share those videos wherever you like for the time being take care